Tim. Tom. We are live. Good, good. It's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. Yeah, bit of a drought. What have you been up to? What are you? I know you went to the Marguerite, right? No, I didn't get to the Marguerite this summer. I'm heading there this fall. Um, Uh I've been out uh, with Tim and Joanne Linehan out on the Kootenai. That was that was great. And uh, I mm. actually have a little video uh, kind of to support the fly we're going to tie here. Uh, oh, cool. It, it, yeah, it worked. Gosh, it's working well out there, the water walker. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, in this it, size, really, in a size eight? Yeah, big. Um, and it's, uh, I don't want to spoil any surprises before people get on here, but uh, there, there's a really good reason for it. And it, it's really funny. We were using for, for years using smaller floaty flies chubbies and things like that and uh yeah. it, it seems like in re- you know we're still using some smaller ones in certain situations but there are places and times when kind of the bigger the better really cause a commotion mm-hmm. on the surface so um yeah we can we can get into that with the video a bit but uh okay. it, it's a great pattern i i know there's a lot to it you know yeah um quite yeah. a few components and and right. uh and uh, stuff like that. One, one of the things that I found. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah, um, I think I have all the materials that I want. That that was another part of it, like um, getting the right rubber legs and things like that for me. Or I'm curious as to what you're using for rubber. Yeah, I, I, and I tell you what, I'm curious as to what you're using as well because that's a that's a huge part of it, and and how you you're- tie them and. Uh, you're gonna want to use. You're gonna want to use what I got, Flagler. Oh, really? I bet you have silicone stuff, and that's really gonna anger me. No, <sighs> okay. I don't. Okay. Because I, I know Orvis was. I, I have a few packs of it. Those silicone rubber legs that are they're mm-hmm. round, round rubber yeah. legs, but they're silicone, and they are just. Yeah. They are the stuff, but they they don't come, or I haven't found them. Where they're you know two stuck together they're they're not stuck together in the sheet they were all individual yeah and yeah. i i do like them when they're stuck together uh for well the the for good tires the good tires can <laughs> take two of those legs and, and okay make, make them <laughs> make them work okay and and, and and that's what you're gonna do here today well you'll see you'll see okay okay <laughs> all right so you better show your video so we can get started because this one's going to take a while. Yeah, this is going to take a while. Okay, we'll we'll get started with the video. So, <laughs> so, so since we haven't we since we haven't tied for a while, people will probably be patient with us, right? Yeah, yeah, I hope so. So, um, this is video. Um, I, every summer, I host trips out on the Kootenai River in uh, northwestern Montana with uh, Linehan Outfitting uh, Company. Uh, gr- great, great guys. I've known Tim forever, and. Uh, Anyway, the last couple of years, this is the Kootenai. It's big, big, wide open river, uh, just spectacular. And red band rainbows, uh, they, they call them bread and butters. They're like 14 to 16 inches in, in West Slope cutties. It's just spectacular mm. stuff. And when I go end of July, beginning of August, it's, it's kind of, it, it's not really hopper time quite yet. Um, but, mm-hmm. you know, we're fishing big foamy bugs. Um, uh pat's rubber legs below the surface um things like uh purple hazes on top uh Mm -hmm. you know uh, pmds and Mm -hmm. but over the last few years it's really funny that the big floaty bugs have just gotten bigger and bigger um and and smaller and smaller also let me let me qualify that and and so Um, getting down to like 14 size 14 chubbies, but then with mm-hmm. these water walkers, um, bigger flies, uh, and the, the reason are these guys and the Kootenai has a ton of these nocturnal stones, which are, which are big. I, the the mm-hmm. shucks are really, really big. Uh, you mm-hmm. don't really see too many of them. We've seen a few floating in the daytime, but I, I think the trout really get on them. Uh, at night and so are used to feeding on these big you know uh, winged adults sitting on the water surface uh, in the dark and so that that, that trend kind of continues throughout the day and so mm-hmm. if you throw a big you know uh, water walker like this you know a size eight um, out there 
and th- they're going to take it. And so mm-hmm. we, we, f- we fish the, the big bugs a lot this year, uh, you know, all different colors. And, um, but the one that was working really, really well for me is a black body, red legs and a white top. And mm-hmm. you, you can see how big and floaty it is. And a yeah. lot of times just a little twitch. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. You can sit there for that 10 didn't minutes. That look like a little twitch. Yeah, it was big twitch. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and these rainbows and, and cutties will come off the bottom, uh, you know, from six feet down and just yeah. hammer the thing. And it, it's uh, when, you, when you can, when they're close enough to the boat and you can actually see them coming, you, you watch this little face come up to the fly and just inhale the thing. And uh, yeah, we, we did really, really well with them this year. But the, for me, you can see it in the upper left-hand corner, that, that black um mm-hmm. uh, with the red rubber legs was real really the ticket this year and uh yeah every everybody had a great time water water was great weather was great um yeah uh just a a great time and and the water walker was kind of kind of the star uh and that's that's um you know one of the reasons for choosing it to tie here yeah and i'm i'm excited to have a bunch of these because in chile where i where i host trips and where we film um it's always windy and uh-huh. so a, a lot of the most of the fishing is to terrestrials the fish actually the nymph fishing is isn't as good as the dry fly fishing uh surprisingly and i watched mark melnick just tear up a bunch of big brown trout in a lake one day on a water walker um but you know fishing eights sixes even fours yeah yeah flies like this and it's it's more effective than nymphs and streamers often um but we found also that it's either big really really big foam flies or like size 18 parachute atoms really (laughs) and and now (laughs) quite the range there yeah Yeah. Yeah. wow yeah um yeah that's that's wild yeah Uh, Yes. So so a neat fly. um, And the other good thing is, you know, for for folks watching is there there are a lot of uh, little techniques and stuff like that. If if you're not used to tying with foam there, there's quite a bit, quite a bit to Mm -hmm. to go over. So, yeah. Yeah. um, And yes. So but we should probably get started, Tom, because there there are a lot of components to this one. Um, Yeah. You can start. I I can start. Or are you you not ready? Do you want me to start? I, I just got to get my cameras going here and, uh, Oh, I need a hook. Yeah. So a hook, a hook would help. Okay. I got a, hook a hook would help. Yes. So for a hook, I'm going to be using a, it's a, it's a big hook, a uh, long shanked, uh, lightning strike SN three size eight. Uh, and it, it's a beefy hook. It's two X heavy, three X long. Uh, so, uh, a lot of metal, <laughs> there and i have the hook i got my big game orvis big game jaws just to i mean it again there, there's a lot of hooks sticking out there and and you want uh you want something that's going to hold it nice and firm with that long shank and then utc 140 i'm i'm going to tie mine with a uh a black body and then a red underbelly uh red legs too so um, just as uh, I was using out at Linehan's, it, uh, it was just working for whatever reason. So black and red, huh? black and red. Yeah. Purple okay. and black was working. Um, I'm going to get my thread started on the hook shank and just build a nice little, little base there. And go all the way back. Now this, this is also a fly, uh, that, really uh i won't do it here but it really really benefits from kind of production tying um, yeah. getting the getting the whole whole body done and then coming back and adding stuff and uh, i've used a lot of things for the underbody of these flies and on chubbies and things like that usually it's ice dub ice dub's got a lot of flash to it um, but i found that senyo's laser dub is, is really nice it's it's got mm-hmm. some finer fibers in it and it just yeah. dubs a little better than the than than the ice dub. You, you need does, a lot yeah. of it though. Um, Boy, you need a lot of dubbing on this fly. Oh my yeah, God, yeah, I like a, dubbing. a surprising <laughs> amount of dubbing. Yeah, um, yeah. A, and it just sort of eats the dubbing. So I I do have kind of I know this is going to shock you, Tom, 
but a, a, a rather strange tie-in procedure uh, for my Tim, phone. you always shock me because we never do things the same. <laughs> so I am going to get just a nice little lump going back there. I'm going to end with my thread right at about the hook point. And, uh, but I, I want to have that, that nice big ball of dubbing right there. The body's going to go on top about like this, kind of a, a hook gap, if you will, extending off the back. And I'm going to get some fly tire cement here and I'm going to put it back here rather than in front. And sometimes, I'm warning you, I do break my thread here because I like to put a lot of tension on it. Uh, oh, it would be a shame if you broke your yeah, thread. Yeah, that would really, really would be a really shame. really be a shame. You'd get, there Be there are points off for broken thread. By the way. <laughs> so I take a few like that. And then this is where it gets a little weird. I've been doing this quite a bit lately. I'm going to take two I wraps around I here. That. I don't and doubt it's going to get weird, Flagler. I counter wrap like this, okay? Oh. Just twice. And so then I go back around here, use my hook to change my direction of thread wrap back to normal. And what that does is it's kind of like a little tug of war back and forth that you do. And so it really gets that locked on there. Um, and, and that's what I want. Um, should I keep going, Tom? Yeah, why don't right you go to, why don't you do, do you know. Yeah, do just you, lock the body on. Um, yeah, go up to the front. And, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I, I've, I've kind of been doing that with all my, my foam flies, chubby. You can break your like, thread if you want. That's all right. I, <laughs> I actually just recently did a, uh, one of the Orvis one minute tying tips that, that illustrated that technique. So, but breaking your thread. No, counter wrapping. I'm sure you oh. haven't watched it though, because you already know everything there is to know about fly tying. No, so. I always watch your videos, Flagler. <laughs> I always uh, watch them. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to continue to build up the base, and I want to uh -huh. end kind of halfway between right there and the back edge of the hook eye for my next segment. Maybe just a yeah. little further uh -huh. forward. Did something just change with the audio? No, it sounds okay to me. Oh, I just heard some weird weirdness. And so exact same procedure here. This is where I usually break my thread to there. Take one more. Come on. Come on, do thread. The, do the counter wraps and then come back. Take two around there. Go there. I'll speed through this. Then I go up, fill in the area again. Like like we were saying, it it just this fly just yeah. it's dub, dubbing. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it ridiculous. <laughs> you, you go. I've got way too much, and then you go to put it on, and there's not enough. And well, you want um, a fairly substantial body under this thing. You yeah, know? yeah, you do. Um, and I just I I always want to make sure I leave a little space there. And one of the key things here too is if you're putting this the super glue on kind of try to keep it behind the thread wraps. I've had the the glue go down and, and effectively cement the foam to the eye, which really kind of messes you up. And Boy. same We are going to tie this so differently. Same <laughs> I technique. I can't believe. <laughs> and so that's, that's my whole... Um, underbody i am going to snip this off now just so it doesn't get in the way i like a a long floaty nose on these guys vertical snips to me work a little better i can get that head a little more even um so different so different and that's basically the body of the fly uh yeah and i'll, I'll tie a whole bunch of these up uh you know a dozen or so and just whip finish at this point and, uh -huh. um, and then go from there. Okay. You're up, sir. All right. Oops. As you can see, I'm tying a totally different color. 
I'm going to use, um, I, I recently started using these uh, Eric's uh, Mayfly barbless dry fly hooks. Nice um, hooks. Yeah, it's um, it's a, a nice long shank, you know, and everybody ties these big, long foam body flies on heavy hooks. And, and yeah, I know that, um, I know that maybe with a giant trout, this hook might bend out, but it's plenty strong and it's a lighter wire. So I think, I think I'm going to get, I'm going to get, um, a better float for longer with this lighter wire hook and it's barbless. So it's a nice hook and it gives you plenty of shank room to tie these things. So I'm going to start my thread and what I like to do on this fly, as Tim showed that the worst thing that can happen on these flies is that your, your foam body twists uh, on the shank. So you need to do everything you can to keep that from, from twisting. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay down a thread base, but I'm going to make it rough. I don't, you know, I don't want it to be smooth. I want something that's going to grab that dubbing and grab the foam and then come all the way up to the eye. And I actually take just a little bit of super glue and put that thread in place. I'm unlike the way I usually do things, I'm putting a lot of super glue on this fly. So, and then I'm going to take uh, some dubbing and I'm using a, uh, more of a natural. I'm using this bruiser blend uh, from Fly Fish Food. Uh, it's from Hairline, actually, but it's uh, from Fly Fish Food. And I'm using kind of a kind of a light tannish olive. I don't know what color. What color do they call that? Sasquatch brown. Oh, that's I almost used that. Yeah. That's a, that's a great color too, and that yeah. that stuff, Tom, is that that's pretty close to Senyo's laser dub in terms. Yeah, of, it is. Yeah, it, it is. It, you know what? It, it's got a little yeah. flash, but still dubs well. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna start with a slight taper. You won't be able to see all of this really, but I'm gonna start. You'll see it as I wind it. I'm gonna start with a slight taper, and then I'm gonna tightly dub uh, a fairly substantial body uh, only enough to get me back to the bend. So I'm going to cover this whole shank first with dubbing. And the reason there's two reasons, there's two reasons I'm only going back to the bend. One is that I got a light above me and I can't do too long of a, a noodle here. And the other thing is that it's just, it makes it easier to work with because um you know, you don't want to, uh, you want to have to wind a 12 inch noodle. And then I'm gonna, and this stuff at the end tends to, right at the end of your noodle tends to fray. So I'm gonna just get a little bit of a taper there. And then I'm gonna add some more, a little bit more. And then I'm gonna go forward just uh, just above the hook point and i'm putting a lot of pressure on this dubbing so i'm going to stop about just beyond the hook point i'm going to remove some of my dubbing and then i'm going to take a cup couple of turns of thread right through that dubbing bare thread and then i'm going to put a drop of super glue on here Let that soak in. And then I'm going to come over to my uh, three millimeter foam and cut a section. And I like, I like these, I like the bodies on these water walkers quite thin, thinner than uh, Tim's doing. Uh, a couple reasons. One is that, um, and I'm going to taper the body here. Sometimes uh, long scissors help to give you a nice body taper. I noticed Tim used a nice, uh, Tim used a nice 
machine I'll talk cut. about yeah i'll talk thing. about that when i come back but i, I but back. i like i think that this fly is a really good imitation of a a, a number of things and uh, of course hoppers and stone flies but um another thing that i think they do Such really well is imi imitate damselflies 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 yeah um i know that these fish were eating damselflies on this chilean lake that we were fishing and that and mark was crushing them on uh on water walkers so i tie them i tie them thin and i tie them really leggy and i think that um i think that they're not a bad imitation of a, of a damsel I know it doesn't exactly look like it's a damsel, but with those long legs and the, you know. And then I'm going to take a short section of dubbing, and then I'm going to make it thicker down below because I like to I like to take a turn of dubbing over that foam just to hide the thread wraps. Probably not. It's certainly not essential. But I'm just going to take like one turn of dubbing over that, then pull this forward, and then I'm continuing to build up my body. And I'm going to have to even add a little bit more. But again, you notice that my foam is is thinner than Tim's because I'm, I'm looking for a narrower, a narrow leggy profile on this thing. Well, in, in talking to Tim Linehan uh, out there, he also prefers narrower. Um, yeah. E even for uh -huh. those noct nocturnal stones. And uh, I, I like the wider just really because of the float more than anything, just a little more yeah. surface area. But so I'm going to put that, I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to take a couple turns to really dig that super glue down into the, uh, into the fur. And then I'm going to secure this with three tight turns. I think I'm using 8 0 thread. And not, 8 0? Yeah. I'm using, wow. I think it's 8 0. That's, yeah, it's 8 0. Jeez. But don't forget my foam. My foam is, um, is thinner than yours. Yeah, but still. Wow. Okay. Should I? I'll stop there. I put I start to put my legs and wings in here. So why don't uh, you go okay. ahead. Well let, let me backtrack just a little because I, I got kind of got away from myself and and uh I, I too am using a um oops, hopefully this is gonna come up. Come on, buddy. There we go. I'm using same thing, three millimeter foam. This is it's not your standard two millimeter foam. Um and I do like to use um, it, it's just a, a standard cutter from River Road Creations. And yeah, those are nice. Yeah. And the, the thing, guys, if you have cutters from them, it's a little expensive, but this press is the greatest thing since sliced bread. It, it will take even dull cutters and just bring life back to them. It, it's may, amazing what it does. Yeah, it's for but, people who aren't strong enough to push down that yeah, cutter. Yeah, really. something like that. You know, I had uh, my carpal tunnel surgery, so I can. Oh, I you can did. Really, I can really reef down on those. Things. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's feeling better now. Yeah. Yeah. Feeling good, great. Good. Super. Um. So next step for me, am, I'm going. Yeah, you're going. Is kind of weird. Um. So. Rubber legs. Uh, these are rubber legs. They're marked rubber legs in uh, red and black, medium sized round rubber legs. I do like the ones that come in a sheet so you can take off two at a time so they stick together. Yeah, uh, beginners do it that way. Be beginners do it this way. Yeah, yes, do it, this beginners is, do it that this, way. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, makes, it makes it a lot easier. <laughs> this is when you're just learning. And yeah, one yeah. of the. Well, it's a crutch. It's a crutch, Tim. Are we done? Yeah, yeah we're done. Uh, okay. I'm done. So one of my little things that I like to do, I, I it's probably just a beginner's thing, is I like to take, I do two overhand knots. I'll, this is one segment, but two strands still stuck together, beginner style. And I'll do it down close to one end. Okay, so I got a little double knot 
just a little bit of water really helps to kind of lubricate. I pull it once and then give it a second little stretch. And with the double knot, you kind of get some angle in there. And so I do that at the other end and then I snip the middle, but I won't bore you with that. I have a bunch that I've already kind of, ma kind of manufactured here. And so I'll use the same exact ones for the front legs as I do for the back legs. If that makes any sense. Well, you'll see in a mm -hmm. second. Um, but I do, I do like to, to me, these back legs are kind of the most important in how they orient. And so I, I like to get these tied in first and foremost. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tying thread and go back and get it back to that segment. That cross section cross isn't going to go across the bottom, just across the top. And then what I do, because I'm kind of fussy about, I, I want these legs to splay out and one to point down. So I'm not going to cut anything uh, in, until they're all nicely tied in. And you can just kind of go through the rubber legs that you have and, and pick out the one that's going to go best on this side. And that looks pretty good. I like to put the knot right back where the body intersects the hook, if you will. Uh, just, just something to keep it consistent side to side. And I'll get that, get that tied in. Sometimes you have to bring it down just a little bit so it doesn't go so far back. That's getting there. And then I'll go in and the other side, kind of the same thing. See which one looks best. Uh, we're going to go maybe that guy. And same deal, same length. Get them tied in like that. And then, and only then, do I make a decision as to which one I want to snip off. And we're going to go, we're going to go with this one. Sorry, I missed on that. That leg's about right. I'm going to snip that off a little shorter. And then just to keep things secure, I come back up again. and get these guys secured up the side just to give it another anchor point. I've tried doing this so the, the front legs and the back legs are all in one piece and tied in at once, but gosh, I, I just ended up wasting a whole bunch of rubber legs as a result because um, they just weren't, they were always too short or just not right. I'm going to do it that way. I'll show you how to do it. Too. Okay. He'll show us that. Um, yeah, I'll show you. How to do it. So nice pointed out. Let me zoom out just a little bit. And those are the, those are the things that really kind of activate on the water surface. And, and to me are, are essential uh, for the yeah. fly just to get it moving and walking on the water, if you will. But I'm mm -hmm. going to turn things over to you, Tom. Okay. All right. Where was I? Oh yeah. There I was. Okay. So I am going to prepare some rubber legs. And what I'm using is uh, Spanflex. Ooh, I find, really? I find, yeah, I like Spanflex. <sighs> I, I think it's, I think it, it's hard to get them lined up neatly uh, like, like Tim does. But I find that um, there it's wiggly. I think it's wigglier. So I am going to do my my legs all at once. So for one side, I'm going to take two strands of span flex. See how wiggly that stuff is. And I'm going to tie. I'm going to do this off camera. I'm going to wet it. Helps helps keep the, these together when you. Tie your overhand knot. Just a single overhand knot. Just a single overhand. Yeah, single overhand will hold 
in this span flex. I know some people use super glue. Ugh, no. But if you don't, if you don't use super glue, once you once you bear down on this, these are never going to come out. Super and glue then, to me. Oh, sorry. Super glue yeah, to ahead. me anyway, Tom. Uh, will in some cases, depending on the rubber leg material, super glue will um, really deform the rubber legs. Uh, it, yeah. it doesn't melt it, but it 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 gets a little funky anyway yeah Sorry. so I, I guess you know if you're using rubber legs double overhand um you don't have to with the span flex and then i know that um i know that uh, i want these knots to be an inch apart uh just be and and you can once you tie once you tie one and you get your you get your uh length between the two knots uh uh consistent then you could make a mark on a piece of paper or you can use a you can use a ruler but i know that i want these knots to be an inch apart so what i do is, is i kind of eyeball it roughly and i make another overhand knot this is the hardest part of this fly i think and then i start to draw it tight but i kind of adjust it before it's tight so that I get it about an inch apart. And then I want I don't want to trim these legs after after I finish the fly because I find invariably when I do it I trim a, a leg off that I didn't want to trim. <laughs> so I do all my leg trimming. So I I want this I want this these four legs to be about the same distance as the knot from the body. So I'm going to cut all these off and then I'm going to just throw caution to the wind and hope these legs look good and I'm going to snip one leg off here. And one leg off here. And I can always adjust them a little bit, but I don't have to do much trimming. And I got one leg, and here's my other, here's my other pair of legs that I already did. Um, oops, I can't see those. I did two of them just uh, just to save time. And then I'm gonna bring them over to my vise. And I like to start on the far side first and I'm going to about find about the middle of that tie them in couple turns not too tight yet because you want to maybe adjust them by pulling them so that they're kind of even and then I'll do the near side same way and yeah the legs the legs might not look, uh, you know, when it's static, the legs might not point quite in the direction I want. But I'm not tying these for show. I'm tying them for action. And I don't really care what direction they go because most of the time I'm going to be moving this fly to get some moving to it. And then I'll cinch these down. And you know, I might trim, I might trim the just the ends of those legs, but you can see that that's really, really leggy. Those are those, there's a lot of action going on there. And then I'm going to take some crystal flash, about I don't know, eight strands or so, maybe a little more. And I like midge, I like midge crystal flash for this. I think wow. it gives you a little bit, a little bit nicer. Um, you know, it looks more like venation. And I'm going to wet it. And so and I'm going to make my crystal flash the same length as the body. I take one turn over the top, adjust them so they're straight. And then I'm going to take the, back, uh, the front part and fold it back a little bit. Just push it a little bit so that you can grab a bunch little knot there 
and then trim those even. Going to stick up a little bit, but that's okay. And I'm going to do one more thing before I stop. I'm going to get my green painters tape. The pros use green green painters tape. Blue is blue is passe. Tim, wow. Yeah, blue is passe. Joan, we need to go to the hardware store. Yeah, yeah, you gotta get green. And I'm cutting. So, so I I'm can't, cutting. I up. can't call the blue stuff Rosenbauer tape anymore. No, you can't. It's got to be green. So. I'm just going to uh, fold this over a bit so I have a little thing to grab with the end. And I'm going to take only my rear legs and, and that uh, crystal flash wing and tape that back. I'm going to leave the front legs. I'm going to leave the front legs facing forward because they're not going to give me as much trouble. Oh, I uh, switch. Yep, switch. Yeah. Sorry. Beauty. So I got my rear legs, my rear legs bound up. My front legs are still sticking out because they're not going to give me as much trouble. Okay. I'm going to turn up. it over to you. All right. I, I'm uh, yeah, a little behind schedule here, so I'm going to try to do this quick because Tom, Tom got ahead of me. He ties his legs in all at once. I, I do like to, to tie them in separately, the back legs from the front legs. And so, I again, I just pulled – these segments that can be used for either back or front and uh you get a little more up. bit more bit more experience and you'll uh, then i'll be able, able to do it. it like you do yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah. and so i'll show I, you how i'll give you a private lesson tim i i would appreciate that tom i like my front pincers pointing in like that um and so i kind of try to get these to reasonably do that we'll see like I'm about the same length on either side. We'll see if this side wants to point in. And again, I don't make the decision as to which one to, to snip off um, until the very end here. So if I want them pointing in, I'm going to go with that guy. And let's go and take that guy off. Get rid of that little elbow thing. And then I can go and snip close. these dudes off nice and close. Okay. And I'm going to keep going, Tom, if that's okay with you, to kind of get caught up. Yeah, go up. ahead. All right. Um, so th the next material that I need to tie in here uh, is going to be uh, are the wings. And these are... It's really cool stuff. It's um, called clear speckled, uh, very, very thin foam and, and uh, neat, neat stuff. And again, I use the River Road Creation Cutters to cut these out. I kind of have to, to estimate here um, because I'm going to fold them back, but I sort of know the length. The other thing that I found that's kind of weird is I want to have, I want to make the bottom one extend just a little further than the top one here because we're going to fold them over and the bottom one has to go a slightly greater distance when it's folded than the top one and so try that again i'm just going to take a few give it a little test i want the wings see what i mean that one has to go just a little bit further. I'm going to try to pull this one back. That'll be close enough. I like the wings to extend just off the back of the fly. So they're, they're kind of visible. And these things, believe it or not, when, when you're, when you're stripping this through the water, they, they, they actually flap a little bit. They're really, really thin. And, and so they, they kind of get some motion to them. Now, one of the other things, there's a middle leg on these, and I have some commercially done ones that kind of drive me nuts. I'll show you what happens is the leg isn't, that one's broken. The leg isn't all the way secured, and so it you can pull it through, and that really just kind of bums me out. So Yeah, I think some people pull it through with a needle or something. 
Yeah, I I do. A course kind of a, I, yeah, I, I think that's, I think I've seen somebody do that actually on yeah. a tying video. Yeah. And I do it a little different. I'm going to take a single strand and actually use the strand to center, pull that over there, and then that goes there. And then I just go back and cross wrap, coming back to that forward segment. I don't want to get my leg in there. Get out of there. And that way I've got that all nice and locked down. All right. I'm going to go back one more time. Get back over that segment. You've already tied in your crystal flash, but why don't you go ahead, Tom? I'll, I'm kind of in a different spot than you are. Okay. Yeah, because right. we're doing it. We're doing it. Yeah, kind of diff different, different order here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like All exact right. reverse. All right. So um, what I'm going to do now is for, the first thing I'm going to do is, is dub a little bit of fur around here. Am I? Yeah. Yeah, I am going to double. I can't, I forgot where I was. So uh, just a little bit of, for fairly, actually it's a fairly substantial, short, substantial bunch of fur. And I'm going to pull these front legs and the foam back. And I'm going to get that fur right into there. And I'm going to come up, actually go all the way to the head. Because you you can crowd the head on this because you're not going to finish it at the head. And then take a couple bear turns, drop a super glue again. Getting low, my super glue is getting low. A couple more turns. Again, the... The worst thing that can happen on this is that uh, is that your foam twists after you finish the fly. So you want to do everything you can to secure that foam in place. So I've now got a, a third segment. And then I'm going to just pull my legs forward and attach them. Uh, and the, again, on the far side one, I like to I like to tip it up. If you get a little pull on that, they pull out where they should. So, whoops. So now I've got my front legs and they're, you know, they're kind of, they're not as, they're not as perfect as Tim's, but again, I want, I want just a lot of stuff going on here. And I don't really, I don't really care when it's at rest. Um, what's going on. And then I'm going to use, I think it's the same foam as you're using, Tim. It's this, um, River Road, yeah, sheet yeah. material. That neat medium, stuff. Medium tan speckled. Yeah, mine was the clear, the clear speckled. Oh, yours is clear. Mine is tan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to cut, cut a wing. By the way, if you uh, if you don't use a, I know Tim cuts these a lot of these things with a paper cutter, uh, which is a it's a good idea. If you're not going to use a paper cutter, you want you want a good long pair of really sharp scissors for cutting foam because you can get that you can get that um, nice straight cut um, with the long with the long scissors. So it's good to have a really long pair. And then I'm going to place the foam over the back and take about three tight turns and then push that forward 
Should I keep going? Should I tie the middle leg in? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I do just, my middle leg. Sorry, yeah, I'm one step behind you. That's all. One one small all right. step, and we're good. Okay, one small step for Flagler. Yeah. So um, I just take a, a single strand, and I put it on top of the that middle section, and then I come over the top with a single a single wrap. Did I grab that? Oh, something happened there. Didn't look right. I'm just going to place place it there. Uh, I'm going to fold it over there. It's easier. So I want to fold this middle leg. Good idea. The, yeah, over the thread. Well, my hands aren't working today. And just bring that back over the top, leaving leaving that just a single piece of thread there. And then I'll even them out to where I want them. And then I'll put a drop of super glue on top. See how much super glue I'm using? It's called fly tying, Tom, not fly gluing. Yeah. And that <laughs> that will hold that will hold those legs in place once I fold that wing over and it dries. I don't crisscross. Yeah. And then I'll, you know, then I'll, then I'll just trim these middle legs to the same length as the roughly the same. Oops. One thing about this, uh, <laughs> one thing about this flexi floss or span flex is it, doesn't always cut perfectly. It's hard to cut, but it's dur it's super durable. Yeah. Okay. So that's what it looks like at this point. Okay, and I'll I'll get I'll, I'll try to get caught up and we we should be at the same spot after this next okay. little little bit here. Um let me see where I am. Just You're always be, behind me, Tim. I am. I'm always a few steps behind so that's taken care of we don't need that that guy what do i need i need my my wing there it is somewhere so um i'm using i like the regular reg, regular crystal flash and root beer and i've already got it from the hank and i i just keep it um again production tying i i just keep keep the hank in plunger style hackle pliers and i'm gonna bend this forward just gra get those butt ends let me zoom in a little closer on that one so you can see oh you've already oh. folded it over um, i'm not gonna fold it over oh i have not i haven't no i have enough fibers there that it's all good what i am gonna do though is what i do so i keep this stuff is I'm going to go in here, grab it with the plunger style hackle pliers. I think you guys have seen me do this before. I'm going to go just a little longer than the body. And then I have the next batch ready to go. Uh, so to, to lock everything down here, I'm going to do the same thing as Tom did pretty much. I do have that center leg crisscross, so there's no way that that sucker is going to pull out and I'm just going to put a little dab there and a little dab back on the, the wing butts or the underwing butts. And then I just take the whole mess, these two wings, and fold them back over. Make sure I'm going to check the far side. I don't have any legs captured there. Those hang off the back real nicely. You can actually kind of splay them just a little bit, which to me looks kind of natural and really get some flapping. Oh, no. Whew. That was close. Oh, Did you see oh, that? That super glue just I saw that. Re reached out and grabbed that leg. Oh, I wasn't oh. going to say anything. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. That was a quick save. So I'm going to cut my, my little front front legs off just a little shorter than that. And, and that way, see what I mean? How that, e even that deform, that, that 
the mm-hmm. super glue yeah. that got on yeah. there deformed it just a little bit and yeah and, i see somebody in the comment asked asked if you glue those leg ends and it probably came in late but no yeah. we don't don't oh, yeah and so everything is looking happy for me there i do um I know a lot of people don't have them and I kind of get grief every time I do this, but I, I do have really um, large, a large whip finish tool. And yeah. so I can. The, ex- the extended reach. Yeah. Nail. Yeah. And, I, you know, I don't go crazy with the whip finish here. Um, there, I'm going to put some adhesive on there. I've also learned that I cut my tying thread. I don't snip it there because, again, like Tom said, you're liable to snip off a leg. And then all I'm going to do to finish up is I run. I got these two little bands of thread. I don't worry about the thread band in the back. But if I hit these right kind of in the up in the armpits, I guess they are. and then just run it down the sides like that. That keeps the rubber legs locked in and also uh, really, really gets those thread wraps so they're not gonna come unraveled. And yeah, I think that's about it. Wow. All righty, sir, finish it off. Okay. So, um, I'm gonna pull my I, I pull my wings back separately. I don't think it matters, but I think I get a little bit a little bit more secure. So I'm going to take two turns. Then I'm going to pull the second piece over the top. And being careful, being careful of those middle legs. They're going to hang down, but that's all right. I don't really mind that. And then I'm going to cut the wings and shape them. I shape them afterwards because I worry too much about getting it right. It, after the fact. I'm going to shape them with my long scissors. Can, can I ask who whose scissors are they? Where is that? There, I get them from Enrico Puglisi, but they look really nice. They're a. Um, it says Fairy Master. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, one of my cameras went out here. My other camera went out. I don't know why. Well, I don't. Uh, here, I'll show them to you. Here. But they're hair cutting. They're hair cutting scissors. But oh, anyway, okay. I get them. I get them from Enrico Puglisi. Um, and then <clears throat> I'm I'm going to put a little uh, strike indicator tab on top of this. So I'm going to cut just a. A, a piece of foam about half the half the width of the body. Even though the fly is orange, um, I want something. Yeah, that's, we we can't that's... see you, Tom. You got a black screen. Oh, sorry. Um, so I'm just I'm going to put a little orange tab on top of there, and. Trim it short up here. And then I like, I don't like a big head on these because I fish dry dropper a lot. And I find that, and I find that uh, if you leave too long of a head, your dropper tangles around it. So I make my heads a little smaller. If it extends too much in front of the eye, it just. And then I'll whip finish using that extended reach whip finisher. 
Same as Tim. And then reach in with a pair of forceps to get my tape out of there. Oh my. Yeah. It's all right. The fly's durable. Stuff really sticks, huh? Yeah. It's sticky. And I don't really like those those legs sticking down like that, but um, and I'm going to trim trim these a little bit. But again, it's a le it's a leggy fly, and I want this thing to really to really move around a lot on the water, and then I'll put a drop on. Super glue in here or head cement. A little bit up here. And we're done. Cool. I also, I just, so a lot of times, guys, I, I will add the, the indicator as well on mine. It, it all depends on on what I'm doing. One one of the th reasons for having the indicator, though, um, on these is a lot of times when you cast these flies, they'll they'll flip over, and uh, especially if the bottom's kind of a similar color to the top, you you really want to be able to give the a fly a good a good pull, give it a good tug, and get it so it's back right side up. Um, you know, depending if it's windy and stuff like that, they they tend to, to land wing side down um, and, and having one of those indicators just tells you that it's right side up um, right away. Whoops. Warren says I need to watch your tape video. <laughs> I'm going to go like that. All right. Stop preening. I'm not preening. Right. It is a good looking fly, Tim. It's a really good looking fly. Oh, All right, you. I guess we got to do, do the. I guess we got to do the. Uh, I I already put it in the chat, so we'll do the okay. side by side. I'm gonna back up a little bit here, so people can see a little bit more of it. There. Oh, I can zoom in, can I? Maybe I shouldn't. No, your fly looks good. Well, and again, Tom, it it is remarkable. I mean, they're they're basically the same thing, but wow, do we approach them in a different way? Yeah, it, it's really, really pretty incredible. Yeah, it is interesting. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. I I mean, like the exact opposite tying procedure in many ways. Yeah. Um, And and again, guys, it, it's three millimeter craft foam too. Is is kind of I've tried this with the two mil, and it just it's not enough float, and it doesn't it doesn't look right. Um, the the three mil is the way to go for the for the big body. It sure is a good looking bug, though. Yeah. But the the one thing that I have found is as you get smaller. It, it gets a good bit harder to tie. Yeah. Um, I've, yeah. I've tied these, I've tied these down to a 12, which isn't too bad, but I would not want to do a 14. Yeah. I have a, this one right here is the kind of the baby version. And yeah. And what's that? A think, is that a 12? Uh, 12. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, it, it's a great fly, but it, even, even the 12 is, you've, you know, getting a little, And then other colors as well. But. Look how wiggly that is, though. 
I mean, you, you see these things hit the water and they're still wiggling, which is, yeah. which is just the best. Well, to, what's amazing, I mean, we talked about it at the beginning, is is <clears throat> you can have trout that are like super picky. They're they're nosing size 18 little dry flies, and they'll come up and waffle one of these things. And yeah. It, it's just, it's weird. Doesn't always work, <laughs> but sometimes yeah. it does. And I think different colors for different times of day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes natural they want, other times more garish like this. But uh, I'm going to try some green and blue ones for damsels and make them even thinner. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Where's the other one? That the other one that was really working um, this year was you know purple legs, mm -hmm. black black body, and then that that purple ice dub bottom was. I've had really good luck with orange foam flies this year. Huh. Yeah. On small on small streams. Okay, I, are we I'm, ready? Yeah. It's uh it was very close. It was uh, you know, basically neck neck. 20 23 to 19 essentially. So, and the winner is Flagler. Yes. <laughs> congratulations Thank you guys remember y'all if you put it in the comments it doesn't count you have to vote in the thing to keep it legitimate so i appreciate you putting your your votes in the comments but you have to vote on the link i tell you what zlotnik better <laughs> zlotnik better have voted for me i can see his name up there oh he wanted to know about the press that's a river road creations press Stu. Uh, and, and well well worth it um even dull cutters work great with the thing yeah i i that that's some fancy engineering right there for that press yeah they're they are really nice and i don't think anybody else makes a good one. no i i they very few people make the cutters and i yeah. i've never seen any i've seen a couple homemade versions of the press and i think <laughs> Guys try to save a little money on the press, and they end up spending three times as much as <laughs> it, trying uh, to make it at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and uh, over engineering them. And, uh, yep. All right, Tim. Well, well again, yeah, congratulations. Fly. Well, thank you. Um, Are we going to have a tie-off at the tying symposium? I don't think he. I don't think he. Uh, you're coming down though, right? You're going to be there. Yeah, but I don't yeah. think he asked me to do a tie off with you. Maybe we should well, suggest we'll, it. Yeah, we we can talk about that. I, I thought the last one there went pretty well. So it was fun. Uh, yeah, that was fun. And Clouser showed up at the end. And yeah, you um, whipped yeah, my was... ass too. <laughs> no, we were one for one. Yeah, but that, I'm telling you, that's that vote on the second day for me was a sympathy vote. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah it's it, it's a lot of fun and, and that is fun yeah yeah i do it like this is fun but but in front of a live audience that was really cool um yeah yeah, yeah. so we should uh, we should ask him if we can do it again yeah i didn't tell you this but i had all sorts of little sound effects on my phone that i didn't use when uh when you were tying that i was gonna you know, wah, oh. wah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's chicken sounds and stuff like that. that like chicken. I, I chickened out. Um, oh, geez. Yeah. This well, year. Let's do it. Th let's do it this year. Yeah. 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 Okay, everyone. Well, yes. we want to thank all of you for, for tuning in and, and following along with us. This wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be much fun without you guys for sure. Yeah, yeah. So we really we really appreciate your support and your comments and your snarkiness. That's okay. That's okay. We like that. Um, and um, this is really always a for an internet thing is always a very well behaved audience. Yeah, I think. yeah, I it think. could get unruly. Yeah, but it's yeah. It's, been always uh, always well behaved so we appreciate we appreciate you coming uh i hope you tied along if you didn't uh this will be up on uh the orvis uh youtube channel and on your youtube channel as well Tim. i, I do you I'm do not, you archive them or do you not no we don't no um, you don't I, archive. 
I, I will be tied because I, I tied a version of a water walker a couple years ago, a variant mm -hmm. of it, uh, kind of a mm -hmm. simplified version. But I am going to be tying this as one of my tying videos coming up uh, fairly soon. Uh, OK, in, in different colors and all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff like that. And uh, okay. and also talking about rubber legs and silly legs. That'll, that'll be on one of the Orbis one minute things coming up. And uh, cool. Great. Yep. Guys, thank you very much. Really appreciate you tuning in and i uh, hope you enjoyed it thank you all thank you all nailed it